Data. Day two. But in the in the window this time. Yes. That was neatly packed. I will find you again. Find Esther. Daddy, come outside. It's a beautiful day. What wheeling? Uh -huh. We explore more now, or are we? Not allowed to read it yet. Playing the piano though. Dragon Vault. Snippet. Okay. It looks like a picture from a um, church. Rogan är ett övernaturligt väsen. That means it's like a cheese ghost or something. National occurrence. Hmm. Uh, it doesn't seem to be in. Let's go downstairs and see if we can get into the kitchen. Oh, we can. Beautiful sight. There's no. Um, wonder. 
can't read the book though yet. Progress some further in the story. Hmm. Okay. Nothing we can do in here. Let's go out then. I just about given up on you ever waking up. I was looking around the house. So we're okay with that now? Noted. Sleep well? I dreamed of Betty. She was in the garden. And she called for me. How about you, Lissy dearest? Oh, you know me, old fool, wide awake at first light. The Fretlands didn't come home, did they? They did not. There's no sign of anyone. Aside from last night's Miss Walker. I've been thinking about that. I... Uh, dream, maybe? I'd just woken up. I was groggy, and the mist was thick as pea soup. I don't know if I saw what I thought I saw. You were chasing a ghost? I didn't get a good look. I'm not even sure there was anyone there. Oh, there must be someone here. And I'm not talking about ghosts or goats. What was it you said yesterday? Maybe they're peeking at us through the windows. I'll take a gander. The Fretlands will be home soon. And Betty's here. I know it. I feel it. If you say so, Teddy Bear. Have you had your noodle juice yet? I'm not rummaging through their cupboards. You'll be a pill without your tea and toast, old bean. We need to get you sorted. I'm not hungry. First point on the agenda. Find the natives. A mission, not dog. I'll scout ahead. I'll meet okay. you down by those houses. Let's uncover your secrets, Gorvik. Uh, oh, get him. August 4th, 1923. Dear Mr. Harden, hope this letter finds you well. My husband, Joan, and I received your letter from July 9th. We would like to extend an invitation to visit our home this October. Do not worry about being an inconvenience, as we have only one child, our daughter, Ruth. Plenty of room for a visitor. We were troubled to hear of your sister Elizabeth's disappearance. Unfortunately, I have no news to share. Nor do I believe she has landed in Gravik yet. I have made inquiries and shall send you another letter if there is word. I'm certain she's alright, however, and that she's simply being delayed on her journey. In regards to your travels, I'm afraid there's no longer a ferry from Olesund, Olesund to Gravik. So you will need to find your own transport across the fjord. When you arrive, you will find our farm on top of the hill. There's a road from the landing up and past the general store. Our farmhouse won't be hard to see. The largest house in the village. Please write again when you have settled on your travel plans. or receive word of your sister. My husband and I very much look forward to seeing you here in October. Safely, Britain. This is a bit of a map, then we are up to the right, and then we have the landing down there. Okay. That's it. Let's see. That's crazy. Okay. Let's explore. Oh, to jog. In there. It looks beautiful. Or well. Oh, 
Totally. You can sit there forever otherwise. <laughs> okay, so that ends up in the camera. Oh, okay. Okay, so we have to find out where oh. Oh, these are the natives, huh? I think we are down here. Oh. Uh, let's see, we have... Show what this rolled up. This one goes. A spot to draw at. Huh? Beautiful setting. Looks like going off. Guess that is something that open up. Later or yep, can't talk at the moment. Hello, nobody fell down. means traitor. That's forader. It's traitor. Hey, eyes up here. Yeah, yeah, I'm coming down. Have you gone blind, old king? I'm in the tree. I need to go and get to her. If there was something to explore or drawing, have you gone blind, old bean? I'm in the tree. It's such a beautiful day. You mm -hmm. could bottle and sell this air in Boston. It's frankly medicinal. He's always climbing trees, rocks, and buildings, and Teddy? it never fails to worry him. Careful, you don't fall. You suck the fun out of everything, old boy. We're far from any doctor. I don't want you to hurt yourself. That's not very likely, is it? <laughs> I thought you were scouting ahead. What do you think I'm doing? Vantage point, like on a pirate ship. I can probably see our house in Hanover from here. Did you check those buildings? Knocking on doors isn't a scout's job, old bean. Okay. There must be someone around. Only one way to find out, old sport. Did you check all the houses? Not yet. Let's see, can we knock on these now then? Oh. Yep. Hello? Anyone here? Why, 
Hello, Mr. American. Please come in for a cup of tea and biscuits. You're not helping. Also, <laughs> they drink coffee. No one home? <clears throat> uh. Hello? Who? Who's there? Hello? Anyone home? Hmm. You know from. Oh, so. Check this first. September twenty first, nineteen twenty three. Vier desperata. Lissy, found something here. Escalated from words to stones. Blood has been spilled. The curse haunts us all. There is no hope left in uh, good sparata. Good God. Right. In this God forsaken place. The death of the Jiminy. Death of the children was the end of Grovit. Whatever remained of our souls departed with them. Hmm. You should see this, Lissy. The letter just trails off. It was never sent. Yeah, it seems to be some kind of a curse. Died and did you see this door closing? It was just the wind, Teddy Bear. You're as skittish as a pussy cat. There's one more house. Third time's the charm. Anyone home? Unless they're playing hide and go seek, I'd say that's enough. Uh, looks empty. Three strikes, you're out. I don't think anyone's been home for a while. Someone painted the word traitor on one of the doors. And there was a letter. It sounded foreboding. Well, you were wrong. The villagers are not indoors. Okay, um... Let's explore, I huh? saw some sheds down by the water. There's the general store. The church. In other words, time for some sightseeing? Well, mm -hmm. it's a bright and beautiful day. And we have nothing better to do. Yep. What on earth are you doing? Handstands, Teddy. My record is two minutes. I'm working on three. Just go on ahead. I'll catch up. Now is the question. Shall we go down first? And that. Rip church later. Not taking that slippery way down. Give us. What's this then? No trespassing for traitors. Cool. Want to jump the gate and explore what's on the other side? What do you hmm. think, sport? Teddy? Hmm. It's not safe. Oh, horse feathers! <laughs> you may be the most boring man in this country. Where's your sense of adventure, old sport? Don't you want to see where these tracks go? They lead to the old mine, and no. I've had enough adventure on this side of the fence. Besides, they wrote no trespassing for a reason. You're such a terrible bore, Teddy Bear. Mm. I'll wager a thousand clams. You'll jump this gate at some point, if you believe Betty's on the other side. 
Frederick Fretland. Who are these traitors he refers to? Good question. Yep, let's uh, check down here first. There's... What's this? Remnants of the mining operation. What? Mine? Remember, I, I told you yesterday. There was a mine here, but it closed down 20 years ago. I know, Edward. I was just checking for a sense of humor. Still nowhere to be found. Where do these tracks lead? To the mine. Where else would they go? I don't know. A castle up in the mountains? Where the frost giants live? And this is how they received their monthly offering of meat from the villagers. Goat, I hope. I don't understand why they just leave this here. I'm like an altar to adversity. It's creepy. Rustic superstition. Perhaps they believed they'd attract bad luck if they moved it. Yeah, what this says now. To Min Om. It's a memorial. Three men died when the mine collapsed in 1902. Georg Hattestein, Niels Framby, Arna Fretland. See, this is what working a regular job. D did you say Fretland? The younger brother who was mentioned in the article. The memorial over there. The, the, the three people who lost their lives in the mine. He was just 19. How long have you been working in the mine? That's too young for a dirty job like digging into rock. We're in the real world, Lissy. Most teeners don't have the luxury to idle away their days with games and witty repartee. Ouch. <laughs> the newspaper said the accident forced the mine to shut down. What does any of this have to do with us? I still don't know why Elizabeth came here. And you think it has something to do with this mine? Or with what it did to the village? Maybe. Oh. Oh. So there you have a boat, but uh... Doesn't look like it. Hmm. What a spot to draw. A lovely view. Good advertisement for visiting the fjords in Norway. Is this beautiful up there? Okay, then. We looked, uh, we got something to look at, but he drew off something else. <laughs> he drew that one. So let's get here then. Okay. Wonder what it's drawing off this time though. Okay, look at that. Yeah. 
The general store then, huh? Don't go back to camp. And stay here instead. And how would I survive? Hunt? Harvest? Forage? People have survived here for centuries. Why can't we? I wouldn't even know where to begin. I could learn. I'd start with goats. Goats can be eaten and milked. Probably not in that order. And that would be an odd order. Nothing is closed. Why lock any doors? I can't imagine they have a problem with punks and hoodlums. The sign says they're closed, but I thought maybe. Hello? Are you open? Is that? Lizzie, come here. It's Betty's hat. She was here. She could still be in there. Betty? Uh, Betty! Are you sure, Edward? I mean, it's just a hat. Is it even a hat? I'm I know sure my I... sister's hat, Lissy. I have to get inside. What about hmm. the breaking and entering part? I could care less what they call it. Okay. Going breaker. Okay, let's uh, look around first before we do that part. Where are you going? Looking around first. Could have gone that way, so that goes around. There's nothing more there. Where are you going? Looking around. Yes, this is nothing. Are you looking for a way inside? Yeah, we kind of have to do this in a certain order. Take the shovel and smash the window. Open. Oh. No luck. Can't do anything with the ladder. Pick that up. Check these windows down. Denied. Here we go. Here's an open window. You seem eager to break the law. I approve. Won't budge. Oh, don't be a milk toast. Well, it's stuck. Atta boy, Teddy. You can do this. Pull harder. Come on. I can't believe I'm actually breaking. Whoops, Daisy. <laughs> oh my, Teddy. You're such a sap. Oh, thank you. Didn't even help us up. Burglar would, by definition, enter a building Jeez. on a higher floor. The state of this place. Oh, Betty. Mm. Edward. I hope you weren't here when. Is this blood? Not necessarily human blood. Well, that's all right then. What does it say? Barn murder? Someone murdered a barn? <laughs> In child murder. Murder a child means child. And murder, that's... Child murder. Edward. They murdered a child? Someone thought so. Probably the same someone who vandalized the store. I'm not sure how I feel about being in here. Don't be ridiculous. We're all alone. What else do you suggest we do? The hat's in here. Calm down, old boy. Anyway, how's the hat going to help us? Who knows what else is in here? There could be more clues. All right. Okay. Everything's Jake. 
We made it into the store. I'm sure we'll find a way through that door. It's the same photograph as in the farmhouse. Johan's farm house, gone. But... At least I assume he's the one who's been snipped. Frederick clearly did not want anything to do with his twin brother. And if he blames his twin brother for the death then, huh? of what he calls traitors. What did they do to him? Cross him in some way. Why else keep a shit... L a list of undesirables? Hmm. List of traitors, huh? Milk? Odin's milk. <laughs> That's what it translates to. Vaseline. Pretty cash register. Coffee. Sent mail. Must be at least ten envelopes, he notices. All of them stamped and addressed but stuck in. It's your limbo. These were never sent. How long have they been piling up? I received Mrs. Fretland's letter in June, and they received my letter from July. A couple of months. Perhaps the world forgot about Glovik. Hmm. Huh. Out of order. Why hasn't it been fixed? Perhaps there wasn't much demand for it anymore. Hmm. S. O. S. Hmm? Oh boy. If only this thing worked. We could order a boat to come get us. Or, even better, order some hot grub. Simon Ferrarut. Simon from Root. What are you doing? Looking for keys. Your life of crime continues. There's a note. Is it written in Viking runes? <laughs> what does it say? from Simon. Yai put it means I put. Nurkel is key. Mm -hmm. Casa. I don't know what that word means. He put the key in the casa? Casa. I wish I had my dictionary. The note's addressed to his father. So the key was moved. But where to? Somewhere safer. More convenient. Can we really trust your translations? You only started studying a month ago. I spent the summer reading, and I had a lot of free time on the ocean voyage. Come on, how much could you possibly pick up in a few months? You know my mind, it's a sponge. Casa means cash register. Could be out there then. Else in Casa. So that's what it means. Cash register. You're a genuine gangster now, old fruit. Don't worry. If you get busted, I'll come visit you in the big house. Wasn't this supposed <laughs> to be a key? Here it is. That one, okay. Hey. 
Bingo! It is her hat. Teddy, I'm not Betty sure that's... Betty was here, but not long ago. Okay, but if that is her hat, what's it doing in a locked storeroom? Another breadcrumb. That's not an answer. I know for sure she was here. That's what matters. You know best, Edward. So, what now? If this is a breadcrumb, where's the next one? There must be a reason her hat's in this room. A letter, too? What's that? A handwritten note. Not blind. What does it say, you silly goose? It's hard to read. I'm not sure my translation will be... Johan, you... Nectar. Refuse. You refuse to speak to me, so I write this letter instead. It's from Frederick Fretland to his brother. Uh, Simon did not... Bloody hell. Simon did not murder your Ruth. He was fond of his cousin. Ruth? Ruth is the daughter of Anna and Johan, which means... The little girl in the photograph at the farmhouse. Oh, Edward. The Fretland girl was murdered. This is simply awful. Simon was working at the farm while I tended to the store. I would have seen him had he passed on the way up to the cliffs. They thought Simon killed Ruth. His own cousin. Ruth was... What's that word? Playing. Ruth was always playing on the rocks below the church. She must have fallen by accident. The note ends there. Frederick never finished it. And Johann never read it. Not that it would have made a difference. If Johann thought... The mob showed up for Simon. His father would have tried to protect him. September 17th. You would have been here, Betty. The rocks below the church. Isn't the church right above us? Edward, come look at this. That's the cliff, right there. The one in the note? I bet you a million clams. Where? See for yourself. I guess that could be where. Let's check it out. No, Lissy, wait. Oh, she isn't waiting. doing this doesn't concern us a little girl died we're staying in her home for god's sake are you completely without heart get yourself up here edward harden right this minute come on it's an easy climb this looks very dangerous oh, you're a big boy start acting like it not mount everest i don't know about this whoops a daisy What is this? Where little Ruth died. You're being morbid. And this is a distraction. I'm here for Betty, not because some girl Edward, got herself. You insensitive brute. You're like the tin woodman, no heart. You know, you've grown cold and mean in that horrid study of yours. With only books and bugs to keep you company for years and years and years. There are other people in this world, you know. It's not all about you. You're going to do this. If not for Ruth, then for us. We're going to figure out what happened to the poor girl. Together. Yeah. The flowers and others are all the way. That's been here a while. Didn't you say it happened over a month ago? You'd think her family would have replaced it with fresh flowers. Hmm. Is that blood? The girl could have hit her head on that rock. There would have been plenty of blood. That's awful. I think there's something behind it. Mm -hmm. Can you move the rock aside? Yes, I can. Uh, what? 
must be Ruth's. Where's the head? Maybe the killer also decapitates dolls. Hold on. This pin. This is old. Very old. It looks like something from the from the Viking era. We are in the land of Vikings. This could be a thousand years old. It does not belong on a child's doll. Who cares? Ruth is dead, and you're obsessing about a rusty old pin? Let's go further out. Maybe we'll find more clues. Come on, old sport. It's not far. Can you wait just one minute so that I can catch my breath? Huh. Do you follow the same path, Betty? Or am I just stumbling through darkness? You can see clear beyond the edge of the world. Uh, one oh, second. teddy bear. <laughs> we need to take you out walking more <sighs> often. So, the girl fell from up here. Was pushed, you mean. Can you see where she fell? Seeing as you're so concerned about me falling out of trees, I wouldn't want to risk falling off a cliff. Yeah, it's supposed to be a little bit of a mystery. This looking down his heart does not favor high. Stony notices would be the likely terminating point of a fall. If she fell head first on that rock, she'd have died instantly. Edward, honestly. You wanted to learn more. This is you learning more. She hit her head and fell into the bush where I found her doll. Happy now, Alice? I'm not. What was she doing up here in the first place? Playing? She was a child. Children play in dangerous places. There must be more to it. Let's find out where this path leads. No, absolutely not. <sighs> I don't have time for this nonsense. We're running out of daylight, and Betty's still... We're still out there. Mm -hmm. Lissy, slow down. I can't keep up with you. Who knows what's up there? It's not worth the risk of falling and breaking something. Lissy, are you there? Teddy. My word. Uh, look away, Lissy. Is this what happened to the villagers? Did they kill themselves? It's one body. Let's not jump to conclusions. Oh, this is just ghastly. What made him do this? How long has he been? From the state of the body, perhaps a couple of weeks. It depends on temperature and humidity, of course. What does that say? God forgive me. Don't suicides go to hell? Isn't that what your father said when Stop. your mother Don't. drowned herself? Sorry. Do you think this has something to do with Ruth? Maybe she came across the hangman before she died. And it scared her. So she ran no. and... This happened later. Well, there's some consolation in that, I guess. Maybe it's the killer. The guilt ate him up, and he offed himself. That's just speculation with no basis in fact. Who was he? One of the Fretlanders? It's not Johan or Frederick. And he's too old to be Simon. There's nothing more to do here. I'm going back. Let the poor soul rest in peace. Does it look like he's resting in peace? You're just going to leave him hanging? You're an insensitive brute. I'm here for Betty. This is... It's tragic, but really none of my oh, concern. Betty, 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 always just mm. Betty. You don't care about anyone else. What if that was me up there? Would you care then? All you do is obsess over a scarf and... And a hat and... Ugh. It's all I have of Betty. Betty, there she is again. Edward, 
the hanged man. He's someone. No matter what he did or didn't do, he deserves respect. Would you please just do this one decent deed? If not for me, then for yourself. Or for... For your Betty. What are you doing? You can't just pull him down by his legs. Try loosening the noose. I can't reach that far. Can with this chair? I'm going to be sick. I can't do this. Yes, you can. Teddy. Edward. I know you can. You've been through much worse. And yeah, let's try this again then. Edward. It's been two days. If they're not back tonight... They're not coming back. Perhaps they left after their daughter died. Was murdered, you mean? Isn't that what we think happened? Uh, in solution, he believes he's often the correct Penny one. For your thoughts? But he just believed Simon to the roof, and so he is most like... Oh, he most likely did. The tragedy befalls them ever. Can we talk about this tomorrow? I'm sorry. You're exhausted. I, I buried a corpse today, Alice. I know. I'm sorry. Why don't you sleep in the guest bedroom? The couch is fine. The Fretlands could still come home. All right. Just don't come crying to me if you wake up with a crick in your neck. I'll be up for a while if you feel like talking. I really thought I'd find Betty today. Well, I told you not to get your hopes up, Edward. I mean, we just got here. It's a big place. She could be anywhere. It's just the thought of her alone out there in the dark. She's a tough cookie, your Betty. Tougher than you, Teddy Bear. <laughs> that she is. What did you find? Someone tried to burn this. Just like the book. Isn't that odd? It's addressed to Mrs. Fretland. My dearest Anna. It's from her sister, Margaret. Frederick's wife. The, the two brothers married sisters, remember? Yes, and it's adorable. Keep reading. I really shouldn't. Really? How else are we going to figure out what happened? Keep reading. My dearest Anna, I miss you so very, very much. The baby is due soon, and I wish for our family to reunite before... Da, 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 da. It's been seven years since the dreadful incident at the mine. Can we not convince Frederick and Johan to forgive and forget? I know there are things Frederick has not told me about what they found and why they parted ways. Their grudge is tearing us all apart. Frederick won't even let me speak to half of our neighbors, accusing them of treason. Uh, he's so very angry and full of regrets. It's eating him up. And we... And we what? The rest is unreadable. Margaret reached out to her sister, but I guess it didn't work. This was written before Simon was born, but burned recently. Yeah. Um. Go 
was one node up here I could not read before. Let's see if we can read it now. Oops. Read it now. August, three, August the 3rd, 1923. This morning I had lemon juice in hot water. No sugar. I had a tea. I also had half an apple and dry toast. I've been gaining weight lately. I read, I read about this diet in the paper. Apparently very popular in London. Dreadfully hungry. Hey, fried eggs and sausages. August 4th, 1923. Received an odd letter yesterday. addressed to Joanne. From an American gentleman, Edward Harden of Hanover. The letter was well written and very polite. Mr. Harden received our information from the Allison police when he requested a contact in Gravis. I do wonder why they gave him Joan's name and not Frederick's. Perhaps because our dear Margaret is no longer with us. I'm uh, better prepared to respond in English than Frederick. Mr. Harden inquired about his sister, Elizabeth Harden, traveling on her own. Gently, he's a journalist. Imagine that, crossing the Atlantic Ocean to write about Norway. Sounds wonderful. The letter said Elizabeth telegraphs her brother from Olsen to inform him that she planned to visit Dravis. Who would want to come to this dreary old place? I have no idea. There's nothing here worth writing about anymore. His sister has not arrived yet. If he had, I would have uh, I would have tied her out with questions about America, being a journalist and traveling the world on her own. She sounds so interesting. I hope she does come, even though she will surely be bored out of her mind. I will write Mr. Harden today. No one is not comfortable writing letters, especially in English. He agrees that we should invite Mr. Harden to stay here. He decides to come. After all, there are no guest houses in Ravik, and our spare room is barely used. Also, I have to admit, having a visitor from America sounds terribly exciting. August 5, 1923. This morning I had a boiled egg and buttered toast. But Joan told me I was being silly and that I did not need to lose any weight. Seeing as we are not in London and no one cares. <laughs> Page. Oh boy, that's a lot to read, man. Okay. Wrote Mr. Harden to invite him to stay at the house if he decides to come. I'm terribly excited. I do worry for his sister. I wonder where she could be. August 9, 1923. There was an argument in the shop earlier today. Frederick was yelling at poor Astrid claiming their goats have been grazing on his land. I want to speak up, but knew it would only make him angrier. August 10th, 1923. Joanna went across the fjord this morning to purchase uh, some necessities, including new fabrics, and to pick up the post. The letters have been piling up in the store. I sometimes worry the world has completely forgotten about us. It was 17, 1923. I finished another dress today. This one is for myself. There are no customers anymore. No one here needs another dress, and it's uh, been ages since we visited the city. I hardly know anyone there, and who would want their dresses made in Gravik when they can have one tailored in Olsen. I feel lonely today. I miss my dear Margaret so much after all these years. August 20, 1923. I think Ruth is hiding something from me. She's been awfully secretive. She goes off on her own even more than usual, and her claws are filthy. Don't mind her playing exploring, of course. I always did regret Margaret and I not uh, being allowed to run free when we were little. Ruth said she's just looking for flowers and pretty rocks. I didn't work so much. August 21, 1923. Simon stopped by today with a gift for Ruth. A whole bar of chocolate. Sweet boy. But Frederick would be furious if he knew. 
August 22nd, 1923. I asked the roof if she plays up by Frederick's farm or near the old mine. The problem is she doesn't. I've never had reason not to trust her, but I still feel that she's hiding something from me. Like the end then. I looked at her drawings while she was out. Such an imagination. September 5th, 1923. Received another letter from Mr. Harden. We will be here in October as planned. Look forward to having someone else to speak with only for a few days. Not that Joan is good company, but we have little to converse about outside of our daily routines. There's been no sign of Mr. Harden's sister yet. She left the uh, Olsen weeks ago. Where could she be? She may well have decided to stop along the way. We heard nothing, but we so rarely speak with anyone outside Gravik these days. I do hope she's all right. I would hate for Mr. Harden to come all this way to no avail. Ruth is still being secretive. I know she's hiding something. One of these days I will follow her. September 9, 1923. No church, no church service again today. The vicar hasn't been back since the memorial service in July. No one believes he won't be back. And that he has given up on Gravik, like everyone else. I am coming down with the cold. September 15, 1923. Someone damaged our boat during the night. Third one this month. You one suspects Frederick, of course. There's something is uh, bubbling to the surface again after all these years. I'm not at all feeling well and spent most of yesterday and today in bed. Roof was sweet and brought me potato soup and tea with honey and milk. September 18th, 23. He has left us. Our dearest roof is gone. I cannot believe it was Simon's doing. He too is now gone, with him all hope Gravik had left him. Him. Uh, okay. Here we play the piano earlier. Roof's room. For bundles and thing to check now up here. No, they're closed. Nothing. Yep. yep, let's go down. Get the Beautiful setting, though. Where's that one? We check the picture before. Do you think Simon killed Ruth? It's not important what I think. I don't know what to believe. But sometimes children do monstrous things. It 
It's almost painful to look at this photograph now. Their whole world fell apart. Oh, I can't bear to think about it. Now that we know what happened to Ruth, this empty house is even spookier. It's a house, nothing more. You know better than most that souls can linger. Especially if they die. There's no such thing as a soul. Life force, ghost, whatever. You know exactly <laughs> what I'm talking about. The only ghosts are in our minds. Says you. Mm hmm The two brothers married twin sisters, Anna and Margaret Taylor. That's the Grovik stave church behind them. All those hopes and dreams ground to dust by misfortune. Yep. This one up again. New in it, sir. I almost forgot putting this aside when I lit the fire. Wasn't there an inscription inside? Simon. Simon gave that book to Ruth. But who burned it? Johan or Anna. If they believed Simon killed her. But they were friendly, right? Simon and Ruth before I imagine so and we know the sisters were close I still don't understand why the brothers had a falling out whatever drove a wedge between them it was big okay The mine must have been a big deal for Grovik. Grovik. An opportunity to do more than live hand to mouth. What a blow it must have been to lose it all. It's the same photograph we saw in the store. Except this one's whole. So the brother who owns the store Hardrick. was angry with Johan before... before Ruth. Because... Because of the mine. It all comes back to the mine. Johan and Frederick Fretland. Thick as thieves. Before things took a turn. Don't you always say that much of our pain is self-chosen? I wonder about that. Hmm. I guess we're gonna go and check out the mine. Huh? Uh, these we have already read them. These headlines make more sense now. Johan sells his share. And the cave-in occurs shortly thereafter, killing three people. Including the younger brother. The investor pulls out, leaving Frederick with the bills. Oh, I feel awful for everyone. Losing a brother? Losing the business? There were no happy endings here. No happy ending. Touch it. The hat there. What are you doing? Betty will want these back. I don't think it's healthy. Not now, to... please. I'm exhausted. You're looking good. You do look exhausted. Go to bed, Edward. I'll tuck you in. Um, just... Quite the day, huh? I'm ready to pass out. Where will you sleep? Uh, I'll be up for a while. My mind's simply racing. Don't stay up late. Wake me if you hear the Fretlands arriving. Of course. And I'll keep my eyes open for any ghosts that might want to haunt you in your sleep. There are no... Hush now. Sleep. 